Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Since Arrow is on break this week, I wanted to do a bonus Flash video. So this is going to be my top 5 Flash villains that I want to see during Season 1 of the show. We also got a good look at Grant Gustin's full Flash costume, so we should probably talk about that first. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Arrow and Flash videos every week along with bonus Q&A videos. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. We're still kind of in the middle of Arrow Season 2, so we still have several episodes left and they're going to be filming the Flash pilot for the next couple of weeks. So let's talk about Grant Gustin's Flash costume. As expected, it looks a little bit more like a tech suit than straight up fabric like Stephen Amell's Arrow suit. The same person actually made both of those. The pictures we've seen from the set don't include any special effects, but I think that once they edit the footage, they'll tweak the colors just a little bit and add some highlights. If you remember when they debuted Stephen Amell's costume, it was a much more muted green color than the bright green from the comic books. They tuned the color down mostly for practical reasons. One, it's supposed to help hide his identity. Two, it can't be too distracting on camera. And three, bright colors look a little bit silly in real life. They even muted the blue and red of Superman's costume during Man of Steel. So that's why the red we're seeing is so dark compared to the comic book version. I think it's pretty cool. I'm glad that they didn't go crazy with the yellow lightning bolt highlights. It would have been way too distracting. Their goal is to draw as much attention to Grant Gustin's face for viewers like you and me, while at the same time hiding his identity from the other characters. Like whenever Stephen Amell is on screen, you're staring at his face, but for some reason Detective Lance never questions his identity. Here is a quick history of the different Flash costumes over the years, starting with Jake Garrick, who may or may not be in the Flash pilot, played by John Wesley Shipp. Jake Garrick's costume has largely remained unchanged over the years. When DC rebooted everything with New 52, they also rebooted Jake Garrick in the Earth 2 series with this alternate costume. So currently, this is what he looks like. But if he does appear in the pilot, it's possible that they'll stick with the Golden Age version of the costume. Barry Allen's costume has also largely stayed the same since the character debuted. During New 52, they did add some more texture to the Flash symbol on his chest. As you can see, Grant Gustin's version is much less spandexy looking, which is a good thing. We don't know where he'll get the costume yet, either from the ring or it will be like Stephen Amell's costume and he'll physically have to climb into it like a regular pair of pants. Then there's the Wally West costume. It, as well, has largely remained unchanged over the years. The big difference from the Barry Allen costume is that the nose is covered. The New 52 version of Wally West, the current version, is actually debuting, finally, in Flash Annual number 3. That's coming in April 30th next month. So he'll actually be reintroduced to the DC Universe, just like all the other characters after Flashpoint. This is what the brand new version of the costume is going to look like. Imagine it in red though. This is just a variant. He actually kind of looks like the Black Flash, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But now it's your turn though. Let me know what do you think about Grant Gustin's costume and how do you think he's going to get it? How do you think it's going to work? So now let's have some fun and talk about the villains. They've already cast the antagonist for the pilot, which is, you know, Edward Thawne, who's going to be the reverse Flash played by Rick Kuznet, and Daniel Panabaker, who's going to be Killer Frost. Now, if everything goes according to plan, then just like Arrow, they'll get 23 episodes for season one, which is a lot. So they're going to have to dip into the comics to pull some more villains out. Remember, Barry Allen and even Edward Thawne are going to be working at a police station on the show. So it's entirely likely that they'll be hunting down and arresting villains every week. But here we go, number five, Heatwave. Like some of my other picks, he's one of the core rogues, the most frequent recurring group of villains the Flash runs into. Heatwave, as a child, became obsessed with fire and is essentially a pyromaniac. The other rogues, like Captain Cold, inspired him to channel his obsession into a new identity, which is when he took on the Heatwave persona. Post New 52, he was disfigured when he and the other rogues gained their superpowers, and now he can generate fire naturally from his body. It's likely on the show, if they use the character, that they'll use that particle accelerator explosion to give all the rogues, including Heatwave, their meta-human abilities. But it's also possible that they could do it old school and have them use the heat guns like during Flash Rebirth. They did imply that we would be seeing more super-powered people on the show, but they didn't say if everyone's going to have powers at the beginning, whenever the show starts, or if they're going to develop them over time. Number four, the Axel Walker trickster. He's the current version of the character in the comics. He was a normal person that took the name from the original Trickster after he died. Right now in the comics, he's already had his arm torn off by Gorilla Grodd and has kind of been exiled from the rogues. He doesn't have any superpowers and is really more of a nuisance to the Flash. I think he exploding yo-yos, but he does have a pair of shoes that allow him to fly for periods of time. I can only imagine how the show will deal with that though. Number three, Weather Wizard. Like the other rogues, he also gained his superpowers during the New 52 reboot. The name explains everything, but because of the way his powers work, the more he uses them to control weather, the more depressed he gets. Which is kind of funny. 
As part of the comics reboot, he goes after Dr. Elias, who the rogues blame for the accident that gave them superpowers. So the TV show is just substituting the character Tom Cavanaugh is playing Harrison Wells for that Dr. Elias character in the comics. Harrison Wells is the person on the show that they're going to blame for the particle accelerator explosion, so any rogues on the show will probably try to get revenge on him, and Grant Gustin will have to step in to stop him. Number 2, Captain Cold. One of the interesting things about the character is that even though he is a supervillain, he has a moral code. He's usually the one you hear quoting the phrase, rule number one of the rogues, you never kill a Flash. He does have a sister that he cares about, so of all the second tier Flash villains, he's one of the most complex. In my opinion, there can be no Flash show without Captain Cold, so of all the people on my list, he's the most likely we'll see during season one. During the current version of the comics, he even ends up working with Barry Allen, so it's likely on the show that he could end up working with Grant Gustin for short periods of time, you know, like in the way that Oliver and Diggle are working with the Suicide Squad on Arrow. And my number one Flash villain that I really want to see during season one, The Black Flash. He's the physical embodiment of death, so even though he's a character, he's kind of more of an abstract idea. In the comics, the most recent version of the character is just a negative aspect of the Speed Force. Essentially, it means like his role in the story is to balance the scales on a physics level. There's a positive aspect of the Speed Force that Barry Allen and all the other Flashes get their power from, including Professor Zoom. And then there's the negative aspect of the Speed Force, which the Black Flash draws his power from. As you saw earlier in the video, they're bringing Wally West back in the comics next month, and it looks like he's a version of the Black Flash. So I'm sure the story will have something to do with that. So now it's your turn, let me know which villains do you want to see during Season 1 of The Flash. They're going to save some of the bigger ones for Season 2, like Gorilla Grodd I'm sure, but that means that they're just going to bring out some of the smaller rogues first. So next week Arrow is back with the Suicide Squad episode, be sure to subscribe to get my video. We're going to get to see Harley Quinn for the first time on Arrow, it's going to be amazing. She's actually being played by Caitlin Alexa. You can click here to learn all about that in my latest Arrow video, and you can click here to learn more about The Flash Season 1. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.